much, Vanessa. Now, time to go to Canberra and to introduce our next guest, uh, Liberal Democrat Senator David Lionhelm joins us from our Parliament House studio. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We've seen today, we've just heard in the news, a revamped families package in an effort to get it through the Senate. I'm just wondering, we saw a chapter deal with Labor today. Now that there seems to be a lot more bipartisanship between Labor and Liberals, uh, are the crossbench senators less relevant these days, Senator Lionhill? Yeah, that's possible. <laughs> um, I've always been well aware of the fact that the only time my vote matters was when the government was on one side and Labor and the Greens were on the other. So um, I guess I've never been under any illusions about uh, how important I was. But I, I have to say not necessarily all of my crossbench colleagues have been uh, of that mind. So yes, you're quite right. Although I don't think, I don't think there's going to be a, a huge uh, change in, in the opposition of, uh, by Labor and the Greens to many of the government's proposals. I think they, they'll remain fundamentally opposed to the majority of them. Well, we've heard that there's, uh, while there's even discussion, more, more openness with Labor, that there is more um, discussion, more consensus, more effort to get consensus with the crossbenchers. Are you seeing that and is that now across the board from the new Turnbull government? Pretty much. Uh, I, I have uh, an un, unprecedented level of uh, interest in talking to me by ministers. Um, I saw eight last week. I've already seen three plus the Prime Minister this week. Um, some of it's at my initiative, not at, uh, not at their initiative, but it, a good bit of it is them. I, I've used the term, uh, or described it using the term, as off the leash now. They're not being told you have to check with us, with the Prime Minister's office, before you can do anything, think for yourself, negotiate something. They're allowed to be ministers and, and run their own race. So that's the major change. And as a result, they're having chats with me and several of the other crossbenchers sort of exploring, well, what do you think might get through? What, what's, uh, uh, what options do I have uh, of the legislation that was previously rejected? Um, do you think any of it could be uh, revived uh, and renegotiated with the crossbench? So they're quite productive discussions, really. Um, you know, still a long way to go in terms of what, what actually occurs. But at least the environment is, uh, is uh, more open. Do you get the feeling that everything's on the table that was held up in the Senate? Or have they told you there are some areas they won't negotiate that they are still prepared to fight on? Um, not in so many words. You definitely get the impression that um, uh, things that were previously ruled out for one reason or another are back on the table. But no, I mean, I think uh, the, the broad policy direction of, of the government under Abbott's uh, prime ministership is not being completely changed, but there's a difference in emphasis, if you like. They're, and they're looking for pragmatic solutions, so what can be achieved, what can't be achieved. Some things will be taken to the next election, I'm sure, um, so they won't try to get them through the Senate, and some things they wouldn't get through the Senate anyway. But, um, but they're probably still in favour of them and they'll take them as po election policies. Well, let's look at that revamped families package we heard about that's uh, going to be put forward. Mm -hmm. Did you have discussions on that and, and what would be your view on this revamped package? Are you likely to pass this? Yeah, I've, I've been talking to Scott Morrison about this for about, probably about the last six months. Um, it hasn't changed a great deal over that period. Um, the, he originally started out saying the family tax benefit B would uh, run out at six years old and then made it plain to the crossbench, but I'll negotiate that up um, if that'll help to get your support. Um, the rest of it, uh, there's some tweaking of the details. Um, he originally started off just talking about family tax benefit A and B as a saving. Then he brought childcare into it and said, OK, I'm prepared to put more money into childcare and rejig it so that it's, it's more targeted, but I'm not going to do that unless uh, the family tax benefit savings were achieved. Um, I thought that was quite a worthwhile strategy to see which, which of those two was most preferred by the crossbench, but he wasn't uh, successful in that. So now um, we have a slightly tweaked version of uh, what was presented to me months ago um, out in the public 
and the expectation is that Labor might support it. So, you know, relative to your, relevant to your first question, um, it may be that the crossbench has no say in it in the end. Okay, are there any things that you think you will have a say in now? I mean, things that you can see are already emerging. I mean, the one that comes to mind, of course, is uh, the reform of the Senate voting. Yes, um, well, industrial relations and reform of the Senate are two that, uh, that uh, you know, may require crossbench support. I actually have uh, um, seven of my crossbench colleagues in agreement on uh, the, the basis of a proposal for reform of the Senate. Um, I think the government is listening to us. Um, I, I suspect Labor will probably be um, w willing to go along with us. Labor's not that keen on the um, idea of getting rid of the minor parties via um, the major recommendations of the Joint Standing Committee. So I, I, I think you know we might reach a, a happy middle ground on that one. Um, well that's very interesting Senator because that has been a flashpoint even recently um, a number of people were talking very tough on this but you're seeming to indicate there might be grounds for a solution on what was a rather intractable problem. Yeah well the issue is uh, whether their intention is to reform the, the voting system so that it's uh, a little more representative or whether their objective is to turn it into a big boys club so the little parties like mine and the other minor parties uh, don't get a look in. Now the Joint Standing Committee recommendations were aimed at the latter. It was really, uh, these people are just so much nuisance, so much of a nuisance, we have to uh, rearrange the system so it gets rid of them. Now I think um, time has allowed the government to see that, well not all the crossbench are lunatics, um, um, so maybe we should sort of think about keeping some of them. I think the reality is also that they realised they're never going to get a majority in the Senate or, or, or you know it's almost impossible they would have to win four seats in a state and it's pretty much out of the question they struggle to get three in some states so getting a majority in the Senate for either side actually is pretty much out of the question so they're always going to be dealing with at least a small number of crossbenchers the government's uh, choice really is whether they want to deal with people like me and, and the other crossbenchers or whether they prefer to deal with uh, Nick Xenophon and the Greens. Um, I, I think they would prefer to deal with me and uh, people like me. What's your feeling after those polls this week on the prospect of an early election? I doubt it would be this year but before a budget next year? Mm. Yeah, I, no I don't think even that early. The reason is that the only way they could uh, have a, a Senate election before August next year is with a double dissolution. Now, um, why would you have a double dissolution if you're not going to radically change the voting system? Uh, there's no good reason for that. It lowers the quota. They'd end up with more crossbenchers, probably not less. Um, if they're going to radically reform the voting system, then that's contrary to the sort of discussions I've been having with them. And they would only achieve that um, if, if the crossbench was opposed to it, they would only achieve that with the support of the Greens. Okay. That would be a pretty awkward situation for them. Just finally, your uh, Senate inquiry into the nanny state, how's it going? Are we mm. going to get rid of any of those nanny state laws? What, what's top of the list at the moment, do you think? Well, I, I certainly hope we'll make a difference. Um, bicycle helmets, we're probably going to hit a record for a Senate inquiry in terms of the number of submissions. Mm. Um, it's, it's a huge issue to an awful lot of people and the evidence in favour of having compulsory uh, bicycle helmets is sort of uh, under severe challenge. Um, lockouts in Sydney, we're going to give them a good poke and uh, it, it, it's certainly sending a lot of businesses in King's Cross broke. Is, is that justified? Can Isn't we that a argue state that, issue uh, though? Yes, it is a state issue, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, governments, even federal governments, can ignore um, Senate recommendations. So I suppose we look at it as, well, look, we'll shine a light on it, um, shine a spotlight on this, on this issue, talk about it, get a bit of media attention. With a bit of luck, we'll embarrass some policymakers and, po and politicians. doesn't matter whether in state government or, or federal government. And um, Senate inquiries can be ignored. doesn't matter which level of government they can be. So we still run that risk anyway. Oh, well, let's see if uh, any politicians are still embarrassable. Uh, Senator Lionhelm, yes. thanks for your time tonight. My pleasure.